Okay, it's about 9.30 and I'm on my way to the Luxembourg American Cemetery and Memorial to deliver the flower piece I'm um, using tomorrow during the Memorial Day commemorations. Uh, they're at 2 p.m. I will be there about around 1 p.m. this afternoon. Then put the flower piece in a cold storage room and then um, I'll continue my drive towards Perl uh, and the Zara Moselle Triangle where I'll meet up with some friends I haven't seen for a long time. So I'm very excited um, and I'm very proud to attend such meetings in lieu of uh, 94th Infantry Division, Historical Society, uh, officers and other um, members of the society uh, to pay my respects to the 94th Infantry Division soldiers who fell on the battlefields um, to do that for their next of kin and um, to pay my respects to uh, all soldiers that fell in the line of duty. for one of the association members who wants me to convey my respect to a fallen family member that is buried here. I'm going to pay my respects there. So I'm currently walking towards plot E uh, where I'm going to visit the grave of Staff Sergeant Leroy Kverson. He was in the 94th Infantry Division. He's buried here at the cemetery. Can I just take a small pause, give you some footage and uh, show you his gravesite. And at the Luxembourg American Cemetery and Memorial at Luxembourg at Ham actually a little over 400 94th Infantry Division members found their final resting place. Uh, many, of course, were also repatriated, were flown back to the States, were buried there. But actually, uh, a lot of 94th men are resting here in European soil. And it's, this is not the only cemetery where 94th Infantry Division uh, soldiers are buried. There are, of course, more. But this is the cemetery where most of the 94th men are buried. Person is buried at plot number E, row 12, and I'm slowly making my way toward row 12 now. Um, I think he is in grave 39, I have to check, but um, he's making my way down towards the plot, and as you can see behind me, all the volunteers have planted all these Luxembourg and US flags near the graves, um, two at each grave, and the site looks immaculate again. Every year dozens of volunteers do this work, uh, preparing the, uh, the cemetery, the memorial for Memorial Day, and it really looks, as I said, it looks immaculate. These crosses are, you know, these marble crosses are cleaned by hand. Uh, where and when needed, uh, the grass is cut, uh, it, it really looks and, and is, perhaps you can see it, but there's still people working um, to get everything in order for the ceremony tomorrow. It's really amazing what these volunteers do uh, here. One of the graves here in plot A, row 12, uh, and it's actually um, uh, grave number 12 is Carl J. Shetler, and Carl, Carl J. Shetler was 
uh, captain in the 376th Infantry. Um, he was the commanding officer of uh, Company A 376th Infantry, 1st Battalion, and he uh, was mortally wounded during the attack on Butzdorf uh, after the companies A and C had taken and secured Tettingen. They continued their attack towards Butzdorf. Captain Shatler led that attack and he was mortally wounded near the halfway house. Uh, they actually managed to um, evacuate him. He had severe uh, wounds to the head uh, and um, he, he lived a while during transportation towards uh, an evacuation hospital, but eventually he, he died of his wounds. Uh, his radio operator was also severely wounded. He survived the war. Many men of the 94th Infantry Division were buried here. You can find casualties um, from the early days of January, uh, then up until March, um, late March, uh, when the 94th Infantry Division had pushed all the way to Ludwigshafen. After a couple of days of heavy fighting, cleared the city, secured the city, and that was the last fighting the 94th would see, actually, in the European theater of uh, operations. They were engaged, however, in some artillery missions and infantry missions uh, during the final battle for the pocket of the Ruhr, in which uh, many German troops were captured. And as this pocket was surrounded and eventually the Germans capitulated, the 94th uh, saw some action there, uh, but, but not too much. And after that, they went to the Düsseldorf area and the Wuppertal area where they um, were basically the occupation force uh, occupying Germany. Uh, and then later they moved on to Czechoslovakia. So here I am at the um, graveside of Staff Sergeant Leroy McPherson. He also was in the 376th Infantry. He was in, um, in AM Company. He was leading a heavy machine gun section and he was killed in action on January 18, 1945. And only two days before that, he and his machine gun section managed to break up an attack uh, on the village of Nenik. Germans were counterattacking the village fiercely after the 376th had managed to gain a foothold in the village and, and conquer it by really extremely heavy house-to-house -house fighting. Uh, the village was under uh, artillery and um, mortar fire and McPherson had um, a heavy machine gun uh, section um, on the high ground uh, on the northern end uh, edge of the village and they spotted the Germans attacking the village, basically shot the attack up and drove uh, the attacking force uh, into the Ladeswald, which is very near Nenich. Two days later, McPherson was killed in action. Okay, I'm gonna make my way back to the car now. I dropped off the flowers for the Memorial Day ceremony tomorrow. I'll be back here tomorrow at 2 p.m. Uh, to attend the ceremony and lay the flower piece together with all the other societies and uh, the officials that will be laying flowers here during the ceremony. Once I get back to the car, I'm going to um, drive into the Zarmozel Triangle. I have some research to do for a tour that is that I'm hosting, where the uh, children of a very dear friend of mine uh, will come to Europe, and uh, I have the opportunity to show them around, show them where their father fought and eventually got wounded. That will be an amazing trip, so I'm going to um, do some study, some forework on that visit. So as I explained earlier, uh, dozens of volunteers are working here to get the cemetery in a pristine condition. They're placing two flags at each grave. First, they have some special tool to make two small holes in front of every grave. And the distance is measured by that tool in front of the, of the grave. So all the flags are at the exact same position. And then in each of the holes, a US and Luxembourg flag is placed. And they're doing that to all these over 5,000 
graves in the cemetery, which is an amazing job. Again, this looks really great for tomorrow's ceremony. Two men that are always in my thoughts when I visit here on Memorial Day are El Zelnes and Edward Aikibi. They are still listed as missing in action. As you know, they both were fatally wounded or wounded um, during the attack for Van Holtz Woods and uh, their, their, their bodies were never recovered. So they were listed as missing in action. They were seen alive when they were seen last by American troops, by US troops, and uh, they, they had to abandon them because they could not evacuate them during the fighting. So a year after they went missing in action, they were formally declared killed in action, uh, but their remains uh, were never uncovered. So this concludes my short uh, impression of uh, my arrival after two COVID-stricken years in which no ceremonies were held here. This will be the first one that I'm attending uh, again for the 94th Infantry Division Historical Society. I'm very glad to be back here. I'm very glad to meet my US and German friends in the region again. And um, well, more tomorrow.